Hey, it's Frankenmint. All right, y'all, it's Frankenmint here. So there's really no videos on the internet that show how to get rid of this acrylic bar. So we're gonna go ahead and try to figure this out right now. Um, using, uh, I don't know what this thing is called. Um, reciprocating saw, there we go. I'm using a reciprocating saw and six inch metal blade. Um, We'll see how this goes. I'm tending to cut this in the middle to see what the tension is on this. And ultimately the goal that I had here with this project is I wanted to get rid of this bar because these uh, grommets and inside here it's really yucky and I just kind of wanted to seal it over before we're finishing this bathtub. So I am going to be testing getting rid of this and I would like to, you know, have more evidence on the internet rather than the one video I saw. So let's see how this goes. All right. All right. So it's on. And you see, it kind of, kind of goes steady, but if it goes too fast, it will start bending. And so I don't want it to wave. So I'm just gonna try to keep it steady and smooth on it and see how that goes. All right. Get started. Ha. So you saw that it pretty much just went. Bang, and so I gotta kind of keep that a little bit, bit more careful with that. I can't just kind of let it hold on there heavy. I do see it made a little niche mark, which is good, so I'm gonna keep it going. So let's see. So try it like this. Let's try it. Maybe try this way, perhaps, right? So I'm going to go this way. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting some headway in here. I see it. But yeah, it looks like it's kind of melted. So, oh yeah, I saw fumes too. Oh yeah, look at So, be careful there. Yeah, so see, it pretty much melted right through, but it made a kind of a deep mark. So I think, let's see. Yeah, the paint's warp well, melted down a little bit, but I mean, the blade looks perfectly good. So I'll keep this going. Yeah, I did smell a little bit of, like I did smell it, so it definitely melted a little. That's not safe, so I'm not doing that. Alright. Let's think. Uh, so this is kind of flimsy, so I'm not going to use this tool. I'm going to probably use a oscillating round saw. See if that can help. Now that may still cause the same problems because this is still going to get all melty and hot. So let's figure this out. Too close. There we go. Okay. There we go. So made it about a third of the way through the bar. Alright, you keep going. But yeah, so I can't I don't wanna overdo it. Yeah. 
like slowly kind of kind of like working its way through it. This may not be this is not the best one. Alright. Yeah, see you in uh, here. Safe for it. Yeah, see it's all uh it's all gunked over and melted too a little bit. Alright. Here we go. It comes right off. Alright, it's coming off. Oh, looks like I'll be sweeping, huh? Awesome. Very right, cool. Alright, let's back to it. I'm just gonna keep it going. What I can do, you no, know, because it's kind of dangerous. I was going to say I can... No, this is a bad tool. I'm going to try something else. Alright, so I'm, cutting, I'm back here. I'm here with another tool. I, uh, I thought this thing actually spun. I didn't realize it actually just is kind of flat. I guess it's vibrating back and forth really fast and shaking this blade here. So I will set it to three and see how that goes. All right, let's try this out. same thing it's still melting but it's giving me better control so I like that that's good so I'm gonna turn this up five same time that's still an issue because it's heat you know it's okay so let's turn it down to two surface has a uh, grooves on it, not this edge plate, so. It seems like I might have just been actually making better headway with the other one, but at the expense that I could possibly be causing damage here. 
All right. Yeah, I almost wonder if I should be using just like a lighter, right, and uh, a fume fume hood, because yeah, this happening here this way. Uh, no, I don't want to use a saw. It's just too messy, and I don't know if that'll work. Okay. All right. Don't worry, I'll uh, probably take more videos as I like, figure this out as well for you. I see. That is about what it did. We get a little bit of the melting damage. I think I was able to get maybe halfway through, maybe all the way. Maybe it's just this last little bottom bit. Yeah, I'm gonna try to go for the bottom bit and then I'll see if I can crack it. right so let's go ahead and reveal this right so as you all saw I just cut through the middle I was able to use this tool right this probably is not the most effective tool but I mean slow and I had it you know I think hovering at two right was probably the the way to go uh, see this is kind of the reason why we were really trying to kind of address this because you know, this is this is yucky. This is what you get. Like I don't know how to clean that. I don't think there's anything. I don't think you can use. You know what do we say? Hydrogen peroxide with some floss. I don't think that's gonna address the stuff underneath. So I don't. 
don't really know. What's that? Oh, see, that's a, that's more of the acrylic. Okay, so it snapped on that side. And it snapped right here, too. Now, I'm willing to gauge that this snapped because of the vibration that was occurring. Let's see if we can push them. Nope, we cannot push them. So they're, they're firmly lodged in there. These uh, pieces of... The, I don't know what these are. These pieces of metal or whatever is what was going to be holding them in, right? So, huh. It's interesting. Yeah, see, this is exactly on that side. This is this side. Oh, it's like missing one. See, there isn't one here. There's only one here on this side. Interesting. Okay. All right. So, I don't know what we're going to do. I think... We uh, planned to plan to putty this up and seal this so that it's nice and clean. Uh, so we've actually gotten the bathroom all, um, you know, the fixtures all kind of covered off, uh, so we don't get epoxy dust. We also have coverings on the vent spots, and we also have kind of a dust cover with the zipper over the door. Um, so what had happened was, uh, yeah, like I said in the last video, we pulled out the acrylic bar and. We attempted to fill it up first with um, the Loctite foam and crack sealer. However, we found that uh, you can build it up, but the actual um, epoxy JB Weld tack uh, covering that we used to kind of build this up, uh, it doesn't stick to it. it. It's just not chemically compatible, and so it came right off. And so we ended up uh, needing to remove the bulk of that um, of that. What am I trying to say of the Loctite uh, crack and spray foam, uh, sealant foam. And we just kind of ended up filling this up all the way on both sides, let it dry and cure. And then we attempted to use the directions on the web, which suggested to start with an 80 grit sandpaper and to then move up to 120 grit sandpaper to smoothen it down. However, we found in practice that that wasn't very effective for us. Um, we ended up wasting a lot of the 80 grit paper. Uh, we, you know, using this, we also used this tool. Um, I think it's called the oscillating multi-tool. There you go. With the little iron, uh, and that didn't really help us, um, you know, with the 80. So we ended up needing about 60 grit, and um, that got the job done. And uh, the other advice we wanted to give is don't uh, do a whole bunch of mount up with these because it ends up becoming wasted as um, the powder that you end up sanding away anyway. So you just want to build up a little bit uh, and let it dry and then build up a little more. So you just have kind of a little bit over. And then as you can see here, this is totally flush and we've kind of hit the, the edge here. This is all still going to be um, hit again with uh, the 80 and 120 grit sandpaper all across the entire uh, shower wall and bathtub wall. And uh, we will then <clears throat> apply some primer to it. So yeah, that was uh, the, the advice I have to give about this. We're also gonna uh, tape off and seal these fixtures with uh, tape so they protect it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Hey y'all, we're back. All right, so we were prepared for doing the next phase, which is just actually applying the marine top coat paint. But before we did that, I kind of wanted to review over kind of what's been done so far and uh, what we had in mind. So we did use um, a primer base, the Rust-Oleum Marine Primer base before this to kind of get a coat. Uh, what we found was that the frog tape was actually not that great um, in terms of being too ready to kind of pick up um, a seal and a barrier and to kind of carry over um, with the, the paint. And so that actually wasn't the best. Um, we found that we just needed to apply regular painter's tape after the fact, and that's what we're gonna to continue to do to just make sure things are good to go. Once the layers are coated on, we'll actually take an X-Acto blade to separate it so that we could then remove the tape without lifting up the paint. Um, what else am I missing? The, let's see, the the door barrier was actually very good, um, and I strongly suggest getting one of those uh, with the zipper seal. 
it just makes uh, things easier to breeze to separate your, your barrier. We've also taped down um, some protected drop film onto the floor and some newspaper up to the ledge just to make sure that we don't have any problems with that. Um, these liners are great. You want to be really careful because they will slice your finger and thumb. So be, be like aware of that. Uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, um, the Dollar Tree carries some cheap 99 cent um, dry, clean, erase kind of uh, materials. I don't really have them here to show you. But ultimately, um, in the process before this, we actually had to use 80 and 120 grit uh, sanding blocks to sand down the surface to get it prepared for the primer. Um, in the process of doing that, to not gunk up those um, sanding blocks, we we're suggesting that you um, use those uh, dry clean cloths kind of between passes so that'll minimize the amount of dust. Others use a vacuum. Um, I maybe would recommend that as well, but we just didn't have that resource for other this at this time to use. Um, the only imperfection I see, and you're probably not gonna be able to pick it up on camera, is that there was a little bit of work that we had to do to do a manual touch up here. Uh, I think my shadow's hiding that, but I mean, overall, like you really can't tell. I mean, it, it looks fantastic. Uh, there are a couple of drip spots, which I saw yesterday, but I mean, I believe the primer was drying, so you actually can't see them today, and that was fantastic. I was told that up here, uh, there's actually points where you could see that it actually didn't apply as well as we would have wanted to, so that's gonna be something you're gonna wanna be aware of, that um, it is primer and it's gonna roll down, so it may be that you thought you applied enough, but you may wanna apply just a little bit more. But I mean, it's probably not gonna be something you're gonna care about. I don't think you really observe the top of your tub when you use it. So, I mean, that's it's an A plus in my book. Uh, let's see, am I missing anything? Hmm, I'm not sure, but if I am, I'll think of it right now, okay? Just a moment. I one other thing. I also realized uh, you're also, we're gonna sand it down with the sanding blocks, right? And once you've sanded and cleaned your surface, you're gonna wanna use some TSP cleaner as well. Um, we actually had something that was called TSP substitute in the liquid uh, form, but that worked fine. Um, you just pretty much will run it over along this and kind of wipe it, wipe it off and down. You don't need to rinse it or anything like that. And uh, that's what we did to get the surface ready for priming. And this is the bathtub primed. And now we're gonna be using the Rust-Oleum Marine topside paint uh, to actually get it painted. So we're gonna be doing a layer of this and giving it a day to, well, I don't know, I'd say maybe 24 hours or so to just dry. And then we'll do one other coat and it should be done. Oh, just one last thing. I thought it would also make sense to point out that these are the materials we'll be using for today's task. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to have a couple of sets of gloves for you just so they're easy to have and, and utilize. Um, since we're not worried about dust or kind of the material um, because we're not sanding anymore, we just decided to go ahead and remove this. Oh, also something I didn't point out last time was we did remove these vents and um, this one up here to um, kind of get things dried off and going. And I observed that it did kind of have a strong smell initially, um, but that after, I don't know, about six to eight hours, the noxious um, primer smell was gone and it was mainly the smell of paint. And then um, it's been, you know, maybe about 36 hours now and like 36 hours of like, you know, smell completely fine, like no respirator or anything. So, um, yeah, like I, and I didn't really use like anything, like I was intending to use something to where I was going to do like a squirrel dot, squirrel fan or something like that and kind of run piping to the door and out to a vent. But I found just kind of running the vent fan was, was that was adequate and it did a great job. So, um, yeah, that's what, uh, we're going to kind of be going with. Oh, and also like uh, these are some high density foam rollers. Um, we're going to just try these. Uh, I was told that these aren't very good for oil based paint, which is from my understanding what this is, what this is. Uh, we did shake it. However, it's been, uh, more than a day. So we're going to have to go ahead and manually restir it. And these, of course, um, the drop cloths we'll be using to just kind of detail the area before we get started. And, um, hopefully that's it. So we'll let you know if anything else occurs or if we run into any other problems or encounter any other um, inconveniences. Yeah, this is the stuff that I mentioned in the earlier point in the video. Uh, liquid TSB substitute and the 
dry floor cloths that were used uh, to clean those. And actually, I was wrong. I thought these were used for the dusting part, but it was actually paper towels and rinsing is what we did to get started with that. And like I said, this was what was used on the last step before applying the primer uh, after sanding had been completed. Yeah, a couple other quick points. Um, we found that sanding took up a significant chunk of the time to get going uh, with getting the surface prepared for the primer. Um, we also found that there was a step involving like using a razor blade kind of at the very top um, and the perimeter of the tub just to kind of remove some of the excess old material and kind of get the surface ready. And that actually took a significant chunk of time as well. But um, like this isn't necessarily mentioned uh, in the other like videos we've seen. So I wanted to point out that um, any estimates that you've got for your time, you're going to want to tack on like one and a half times for your total project timeline just to help you kind of stay on the path of like expect realistic expectations when getting this done. Um, also keep in mind, this might be the one time or the first time you're doing it. So I imagine learning effects are going to happen and you'll get faster over time. Um, that's what my observation has been. All right, well, I hope that's it for this phase. We'll go over it after the first coat has been completed. Hey, what's up, team? All right, so we're back. Um, yeah, I just kind of got the little build going. Let's, uh, we've got the first coat of Marine Top Coat done, so we're gonna just go in here. Yeah, it's nice and strong and painty-like for sure. Uh, so these, High density foam rollers with the dome tipped actually work very well uh, to apply this coat. Yeah, this looks really good. It looks like a bathtub. Holy moly. It's just, I mean, like shined and everything. It's, it's looking really great. Um, wow, yeah. Wow. Holy moly. Wow. So, yeah, what I would say is um, you want to make sure that with your primer, your. Um, you have like no drip spots, you wanna kinda of keep it smooth because what will happen is uh, they will appear right through on the coat. So you wanna to try to get it as perfect as you possibly can. I don't know if the video is gonna be able to do it justice with showing them. I do see a couple of small spots, but I mean it's very, very faint. Like you can't really notice it unless you're, you're trying to pay attention to it. So um, let's see, what else? Um, the tip that I have for you is you're gonna to wanna, to, if you can possibly get them, if you could get these as like longer length foam tip brushes, that would be really helpful for you. They didn't have the reach that we kind of wanted to see from them. We actually ended up needing to use a regular um, nylon tip brush that just had a longer uh, handle so that you'd be able to kind of reach those hairy spots kind of over in the corner over there. Cause I mean, you know, you're not trying to stand in here as you're doing that. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, what I'd have to say about that. Like I said, this is one coat applied. It does smell strongly of paint, but I mean, that's all gonna probably dissipate, I would imagine, oh, 12 to 14 hours. Uh, I'm not wearing a respirator or anything. Yeah, this is, um, this is excellent work. I, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. So, we still have another coat of this to get through that we're gonna um, do tomorrow night. And then um, I will exact blade the edges and get this removed and show you an end product of it. Oh, and you saw that before, this is the remaining materials after that's left over. We actually didn't end up using that, so that's not a problem. Yeah. And we used a half of the can of the quart of the marine top coat, so. Very cool. Oh, and also, um, accessing these little parts right here, it, it was kind of tough. It's because uh, of the little gap clearance there, so that's going to be something you're going to want to be aware of as well.